I love maths and I flipping love jokes and puns so when you put the two together I am in <laughs> oh my god my tongue feels so dry what is 2n plus 2n I don't know it sounds for foreign to me <laughs> and now I'm gonna talk about how to get a grade 9 in maths or grade 8 hi and welcome to my new video this week and i know i haven't uploaded in quite a long time guilty but it's because i've been like really busy recently with like egg no i was gonna say exams not exams with like a levels and workload and my part-time job and balancing that out why am i always out of breath for Oh my god, I've just sat down and I'm already out of breath, like I've run a marathon. But anyway, I've like struggled to balance school with work, but I will manage some way to like stay on top of my work. So yeah, so today I'm, I'm planning on filming a how to revise maths GCSE and how to get your top grades, which is the 8 and 9 for the new spec GCSE. So yeah, stay tuned, like and subscribe and comment towards the end of this video for those who are aiming for the grade 9 and grade 8 which are both equivalent to the A star I've got one tip for you guys and as you know I did get a grade 9 in math so just to assure you I'm not chatting rubbish <laughs> I'm not chatting rubbish surprisingly so my first tip is the whole concept of mathematics which is understanding so unlike any most subjects mathematics you can't get away with just learning you can't just get away with learning pythagoras's theorem the quadratic formula the sine cos all the formulas so what i mean by that is like especially with the new gcses there's loads of problem solving like before the old papers were like basically asking you what's x squared times x but now it's like it gives you a square and it's just like one side is x, you're the one's x squared, find the area of this, and it's the same sort of mathematics, but it's just like prigging, prodding, prodding, <laughs> prodding different parts of your brain. Like before it was mostly agitating, do you know the information? Now it's like, do you know the information and can you apply it? Which I think is kind of unfair, like how they've made it harder, but like I find maths personally fun, so I like problem solving. Listening in lessons, in mathematics lessons, is like the most important thing you can do. And if you don't understand any like anything that the teacher has taught, being proactive and going to your teacher, going on YouTube channels, which I'll talk about later on, and physically forcing yourself to learn and understand. Another key thing is knowing your specification. So if you're doing AQA, which is like or AQ or Edexal, which are like the main mathematics GCSE boards. If you just go on the website, I might put it down in the link below. You just find the specification, go through it, it'll tell you the list of topics you do need to know. So that was my first tip. And my big book. My second tip is past papers, like past papers. I cannot stress enough on any video or any teacher that you ask like how what is your best tip on revising maths they will say past papers or exam questions in most of the subjects that is essential but in maths it's the difference between life and death what it used to do was i used to do like any past paper that i could find for my specification and not only my specification but because i was doing edexcel i'd still do the aqa papers the ocr papers because maths is maths like no matter what exam board you do the maths is still going to be the maths. <laughs> maths is maths. But yeah, so try and find exam papers online. I'm sure AQA, Edexcel, all the exam boards probably have their specimen papers for the new GCSEs and they're going to be releasing the papers that I sat in 2017 summer next year, I think. But if you go into this website called, I think it's Maths, F maths Made Fun? Fun maths. Anyway, I'm, I'll ex insert the link somewhere here. They do do all the specimen papers that were released by AQA, Edexcel, OCR, like paper one, paper two, paper three. That's my golden tip, past papers, because as much as you can know like the information, 
you need to like experience doing problem solving and applying that knowledge if you know what I mean. And what my school also found was there was these CGP packs that they were selling. They were like brown envelopes and there were three exam paper sets in them. So there were three paper ones, three paper twos, three paper threes and the mark schemes for them and the approximate grade boundaries because you mark them yourself and then see how many marks you got and see what grade you would have got. And I found them really useful towards the exams because even though they were a lot easier than the actual exams it was just nice to do that exam practice and see what approximate grade you would have got and my school sold them to me for £2.50 but I'm sure if you go online they'll be around £4, £5 and that is another source of exam questions but I'm sure if you ask your teachers, um, exam pro for those doing AQA there's loads of questions you can never have too many maths questions my fifth tip is my third tip, based on mathematicians, can't even count. My third tip is having the right equipment for your maths lessons and exams. Um, because like in the in classrooms, like you can ask your teacher for a ruler or rubber or pencil, but in the exams, like my school, like they refused to supply calculators, I think, or any maths equipment. Like if you did not have your ruler, the school wouldn't give you one. So we were forced to buy our own equipment, but I had my own. And I have a few supplies that I use that I, I recommend for, math, for maths. So the first one is this math set, if you can see it. And I got this from Wilco's, I think, for about £3. They have everything you need. Protractor, compass, ruler, the strange triangular things. Anything, rubber, pencil. And yeah, and this basically has all the equipment you'll need for maths, apart from the calculator. This is your go-to calculator, like Casio. When it comes to calculators, are winning. This is your basic FX85 GT calculator. And I just got pink, because yeah, I conform to gender stereotypes. No, I'm joking. I just got pink because everyone had black and the school calculators were black, so it's just easy to have pink. Oh, do you know what's annoying? Our school told us like, a couple of weeks ago that these calculators weren't good enough for A-level calculators, A-levels and that we had to get special upgraded calculators that had more functions which is so annoying and they cost about 20 quid. <laughs> I think my dad's just got out of the shower and it's about to interrupt my video. And also these are from Tesco these are flashcards and these ones specifically because they're like colour coordinated and you can like assign different colours to different maths so like yellow for formulas, pink for exam questions and answers, green for grass, no I'm taking green for I don't know just you can just it's that these are more helpful because there's colours to it and people might learn via colours or it's just easier to organise so yeah strongly recommend these for maths or you can just make your own flashcards if they're too expensive we just don't want to spend the money so I just cut pieces of card out so I just punch the hole in the corner and I'll just put a keyring in the corner and these are really useful because they're easier to carry around and they're free which is always a good thing if you're poor like me and of course pencils I strongly recommend these big ones because they do last long and they just look cool and no one can steal your pencil because no one has these but you so if someone says that that isn't your pencil be like yes it is my pencil because I'm the only one who has the black pencil my fourth tip is using YouTube videos or you learn best by hearing things or you're a visual learner. I am particularly an auditory auditory learner because I do learn by listening to recordings or listening to my teachers. Others of you may be visual, kinetic, I don't know what the other types are, but there are tests online to see which way you learn best. And yeah, YouTube videos really help me. Um, particularly for subjects that I did not understand because they're basically like a teacher because they're speaking to you, they're showing you how to do it. The only difference between YouTube like 
YouTube videos and your teacher is that with the teacher you can interact more, you can ask questions and they'll answer straight away. So, and it's a free resource, so why not watch it? My favorite YouTubers for maths are Exam Solutions. You can probably find him if you type it into YouTube. He even has his own website. Hegarty Maths, top notch. By far one of my favorite YouTubers and he has his own website and school you have to have a login but I think your school can subscribe to that to get a login and raw maths I don't I didn't particularly use that that much and science and maths by Primrose Kitten she does like summaries quick summaries again I didn't really use that but other people found her quite useful and yeah I'm gonna link these all these videos and links down below so don't worry about that and I'll probably put them on the screen for you also what really helped me was like advice on like how to revise maths and stuff and how to revise other subjects you probably all know Eve Bennett and Jada Jade they are by far my favorite academic youtubers and they really gave like excellent advice for like English literature and they also do mathematics I think so I'll also insert the link to their channels and videos down below. Now I'm on to my fifth tip, which is practice. Make perfect, but it makes you a better mathematician. Start to see repeating um, patterns in maths questions if you do them a lot, like I did. So as soon as I saw a square and I saw calculate the area, I definitely, like, definitely knew, like in a higher maths paper, that it was going to do something something to do with algebra and quadratics as soon as I saw circles and like a tangent I knew it was going to be like calculate the area or calculate intersections so practice does like make you better at maths and it is so important and yeah so they're all my general tips I don't think I have anything else for maths because there's only so much that you can do for maths but to summarize my general tips for maths is understand understand the mathematics and if you don't be proactive go to your teachers for help the second thing is past papers and exam question practice is key to being successful in GCSE maths and having the right equipment such as the right calculator anything else and just to enjoy it like generally I love problem solving and the more you enjoy it, the more you want to find the answer. When it comes to the, your exam papers, working out is key because for the new GCSEs especially, you get awarded for working out even though your answer isn't correct. So just try, always try to put your method and your working out if you do get stuck. And now I'm gonna talk about how to get a grade nine in maths or grade eight. And even if you're not aspiring for a grade eight and nine, these tips may still be useful. My main tip for getting a grade nine is you need to practice and get used to the application questions. What they do is they get a massive question and it's not just on one topic. So it's not just on algebra or quadratics, but they combine it together and you need to be able to spot different things and cover unravel questions, dismantle questions to the bits and pieces of maths that they have put together. If you look at it that way, that a massive eight marker or a massive six marker at the end of the paper is just one, two, three topics mixed together. It's like, it's a better way at looking at it and it will just make it easier for you. So my biggest tip for that is practicing those last questions. There is little point I think if you're aiming for the highest grades to spend your time on the first couple of questions in the paper when it comes to revising but to practice the last three or like six questions on the paper because those are your hardest most challenging ones that the examiners are putting on that paper to distinguish the grade nines from the grade eights the grade eights from the grade sevens and so on so practice them and I do have a link for a maths paper that I found online and this is gold. I think you have to pay for the mark schemes actually. I think I did pay for the mark scheme. And it's like a maths per teacher has just took the hardest questions or made questions up that are super hard and it's just put it together in a massive paper. And of course that's not like the paper you're going to get on the exam. But it's just like the whole paper is grade 9 level questions. And it's maths.com slash grade um, dash nine dash GCSE but the map the A in the maths is a four but I'll put the link here or in the description 
So here is the um, website where I found all the grade 9 questions and they do have a paper 1 and a paper 2 so they don't have the third paper. What's happening with my laptop? But I think you do have to pay for the mark scheme which is a bit annoying. But the questions are like aimed for like grade 9s and like it could stretch you or whatever and like here are a taster of the questions also what else did I write? A level maths questions like core 1 for the old spec core 1 and I think bits of core 2 so I think the high grades of the new spec so the grade 9 and 8 is still like equivalent to some parts of C1 so if you do want those pushy hardy quest harder questions to challenge you to push you just look at a level questions aqa the first couple of questions should be like challenging grade nine and so yeah i think they're all my tips <laughs> they are my grade nine tips or high-end a star tips and hopefully you enjoyed this video on how i revise maths and my top tips for studying maths don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and thank you guys stay tuned ba 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 huh? my mouth hurts so much from talking <laughs>